my full review of Jelly Beer on the Samsung Galaxy Note 2 on AT&T. So let's jump right into settings. Let's go down to About Phone. You see this is based on Android 4.1.2. comes with a custom kernel and this is Jelly Beer. So let's go back. Now, the reason I've been waiting to do my review is because I've been hoping that there would be an update. But I haven't seen an update push since you know, I did the install video. So that's why my review has been kind of late. But let's jump back into settings. And the reason I've been hoping for an update is because of the kind of jitteriness. I don't know if you may see it during this video, but it kind of skips a frame or two. So I just figured I'd point that out. Now if we go under the Jelly Beer settings, you see you can mess with the LCD density, the UI mode and stuff like that. Now I have it on 213 with the Fablet UI, so the status bar is kind of in the center. See how it's kind of in the center, just like the Nexus 7, kind of how that was when it released with Android 4.1, I believe it was. And also, the, the lock screen is kind of smaller, so everything is kind of smaller, but since it is, is the Galaxy Note 2, that's not that bad. And I kind of like it like this, so... If we go back, you can mess with you know the display settings. You can turn on dual panel and settings, like a tablet, where you have all the settings over here. And then if you click on say Wi-Fi, it'll open up, you know, Wi-Fi names and stuff like that. I don't use that because the words get kind of cut off. But if you change it to a DPI, like 120, then those words won't get off, you know, won't get cut off. But everything will be like really small. So that's why I don't have that enabled. You're gonna have your custom carrier label. One thing, I don't, this may not bother you guys. See how the carrier label is down there? Sometimes, for no reason, it jumps up, like, where it's underneath the little toggles. I don't know why, but it just kind of jumps up there randomly. So, I figured I'd point that out as well. So, I mean, I know this is kind of, you know, a work in progress kind of ROM. I mean, it is fully stable and everything, but there's just a few little bugs. You can show your Wi-Fi network name. I can get it to show up. I don't know if it's just me. You can use the alternative allocation picker, which is like from the you know gingerbread days. I don't know if you guys remember that. You can have a custom background stuff like that. You can have your own clock position. I have mine in the center. You can choose your background color for the status bar. So if you want to, you can have a transparent status bar. It won't really show up there. But you see, it's transparent on the home screen. So if we go back into settings. Now I don't have it transparent because it looks kind of weird. Like when you go into an app like say Chrome, it gets kind of weird. But I'll leave it like that for you guys. And you, you know, just like AOKP, you have your day of the week and you have your. But this is different. You have month. So you see up there. So you probably can't. So let me focus in a little bit better. It says Saturday, twenty-second December. So that's kind of new. I haven't really seen where something says month yet, but I thought that was kind of interesting. I don't use it because it looks kind of weird, but I'm going to just hit none. And also you can have your custom boot animation. Now, there is an app by J. Roman that lets you change your boot animation, of course, but you can have, you know, download one off XDA. I don't use the navigation bar, but it's just like the Nexus where you have the back, home, and the recents. You can't change the targets like the navring targets yet but I'm sure he will implement those soon and you can also have your navigation ring where you press on what home when you you know go to Google now you can have two custom apps on the side now it makes me restart if I enable the navigation bar so that's why I'm just kind of telling you guys about that now the power menu you guys should know the power menu you have screenshot you have your reboot options of course but you can prevent show power menu so say you're you know, you have power menu somewhere else. You can change if you want it to show up or not. And of course, you have your toggles. So these are the AOKP toggles. You can have two sets of toggles. You can have the AOKP ones right underneath those, which I think is pretty neat. But I don't need that many toggles. But if you do, you just gotta go to enable toggles. And say you want Wi-Fi, airplane mode, vibrate, silence, torch and say swagger because you know you're awesome like that right now when you pull it down you see you have those toggles as well well i mean it's it's a neat feature but i don't need those that many toggles so 
and disable the vibrate and close that. And you can also change, you know, other stuff with those toggles. Not really going to get too much into those. Now, the interface is where you have all the Cyan Engine mod stuff. So, under lock screen, you, of course, change your clock alignment, have your custom background, your info, battery status, weather, stuff like that. But I like that you can have your own custom slider shortcuts. So, you see, I, I have my camera, Google+, Plus, Google Now, Falcon Pro for Twitter, and I have the unlock. The clock is centered, like I have it in the center, but it doesn't really look centered. Like, I don't know if it's just me or not. But this also brings me into another bug that I found. I don't know if this is just the ROM or the phone itself, because it does this on TouchWiz as well. Now, I'm going to press the home button. See how long it takes for the screen to pop up, you know, for you to be able to unlock it? I'll do the same with the, with the lock button. See, it takes a second or two just so you can, you know, unlock your phone. Which, I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but it is kind of annoying when you're trying to get into your phone really quick. So I figured I'd point that out there for you guys. Now, if you go under System, we have your status bar where you can show the clock, have your AM, PM style. Which, I don't know why they have that there, but they also have like the AOKP settings. So, you also have your CM circle, which I like the CM circle battery, see up there. You, can, you have your brightness control, I haven't gotten it to work. You know the brightness control where you press and hold on the status bar and you slide across. I haven't gotten it to work, but you guys may. Now if you go to the notification drawer, this is where you choose these CyanogenMod mod toggles. Which I like their Cyanogen mod toggles better because they just look better to me. But I mean it's just a personal you know preference. And if we go to wallpaper, you can choose your own custom wallpaper, font size, power menu. You can choose which option options are in the power menu and hardware keys so you can set custom actions so say you want long press on the menu to be your google now you can set that if you want long press on back to kill an app you can also set that which i think is a neat feature so let's go back you also have your custom theme chooser which works well see i don't really have any themes but that one that i downloaded off follow him on twitter and that's pretty much it for this now if you go under sound and stuff, you still have your volume panel where I have it ex expanded. You have your custom signage and mod ringtones. And if you go under display, you can enable rotation for 360 degrees. So if you want to be that kid that holds their phone upside down. You know. Um, other than that, you, have, you do have your advanced options menu though. Which, I don't really mess with the colors and stuff like that, but, you know. Again, I say, if you guys mess with stuff like that, go ahead. We have our performance, which we can't really use. You see they're grayed out, but you can at least change the governor, which is pretty neat. Now, let's go into the apps that come with this. I love the Apollo Music Player. You can download it off the market, but, you know, it's a paid app. I don't know why, but. So, they have Apollo DSP Manager. Someone mentioned to me that it doesn't work for them. It works fine for me. If I play any song with, you know, with my headphones plugged in using Apollo or play music, and I, you know, change the settings in DSP Manager and use it and activate it and stuff like that, it works fine for me. I don't get any force closes or anything like that. But if you want like a different, you know, equalizer app, just search the market for equalizer, and it'll it'll come up with like a cool custom app that you can use. You won't have any issues with those. But I like that it comes with the new Super User instead of Super SU. That's also another big plus for me. But it does come with the 4.1 camera. Which is kind of a shame. Because the camera is really finicky. I don't know if that makes sense. But I mean, it takes pictures really good. But recording, it's pretty terrible at, Like when you try to record something. But I mean, you don't have any custom settings so you can use your power button as the uh, camera shutter button if you want to. I'd, it'd be nice if you could use the home button as a camera shutter. See, because, you know, but you'd have to have the software keys enabled and stuff like that. But you can have burst mode enabled, which it works, but kind of like lags a little bit, if that makes sense. Now, if there is an updated, you know, build for this, I would definitely be posting... It won't be a full review because this is my full review, but it will be a quick look at you know the updated version of this. 
but I have to say I'm going back to Jedi ROM for this phone because the TouchWiz features you don't really know that you miss them until you install something like this but this is a really good choice for those that want AOSP I know I'm just showing you guys launcher but everything about this you know it has AOKP features it has paranoid Android features it has CyanogenMod features this ROM is a really good ROM but if you buy it Note 2 you're buying it for the Samsung features unless you you know specifically bought it because you want to install AOSP on it but that was just kind of my opinion it is a really awesome ROM I recommend this to anybody that wants to try it now the GPS when I was using the Ingress app it, yeah, it didn't really work all that well so GPS is kind of an issue I don't have a Bluetooth device so I can't really test Bluetooth Wi-Fi works perfectly for GLTE and HSPA plus work perfectly for me but if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more videos like this be sure to subscribe to my channel